How to draw vector art in Vectonator Pro, a free graphic design software for iOS. Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Elias Sarantopoulos. In this video, I will introduce you to Vectonator Pro and teach you how to use some basic tools to draw an ornamental typographic using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I would also show you how to export that vector in different formats and test it out on a desktop computer. When you first launch Vectonator, you're presented with the gallery screen where you can create your own document. So go ahead and tap on the plus button. And now we are presented with an array of presets. And you can look around and as you can see there are a lot of presets you can use. But for uh, my example, I did an image web search on vector ornaments. I found one and then I use the cloud download preset, as you can see one of these choices here, to bring it in. So I'm going to tap on the cancel here. Here's the ornament that I found. So I'm going to tap on that. And the first thing I do is I make sure that I make Vectonator ready for me to be able to trace this. By that, I mean, I'm looking at my fill options and my stroke options. So let's go ahead and uh, find this, the fill and the stroke options. They are located on the bottom of the left side. Here's the fill options. Probably yours is on, so just make sure it's off, at least for me, I want it off. I don't want to draw with the fill option on. And for stroke, here it is, it's right below it. You can size this up or down. Mine, one point is off, okay. All right, so now I'm going to go up to the right corner. There are some uh, icons here. I'm going to tap on the settings icon. And then on the snap options, I'm going to keep the smart guides on. No need for snap to edges or points or rulers. Then tap on the icon next to the settings, which is the layers panel. Here's the photo. It's a locked layer. They're supposed to be anyway. And then just at the bottom, I'm going to size down, I'm going to bring down the its opacity, like so, just because I like to see what I'm doing with the pen tool. And then I'm going to create a new layer. So tap on the plus button, rename layer one to, well, whatever you want to rename it for me is ornament, and then just tap away on your uh, screen. Okay, we are ready now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to pinch to zoom in right here. I want to start from here because I have like a semi-circular path, I should say. So for that, I'm going to use, well, you guessed it, the oval tool because it's going to help me to create a perfect circle. So tap and drag. And then if you want to make a perfect circle, all you need to do is to activate the shift key. So the way you do this inside the Vectornator is to uh, place your finger anywhere on the screen, tap it. And as you can see, the shift key has been activated. So, so I'm, I left it like this on purpose, round and big, so we can size this down and I can introduce you to some tools. So go ahead and tap on the move selection tool so we can reposition this. Then on the tools panel, you can see right next to the trash icon is the transform tools. Tap once and you get the uh, rotation tool. Tap again and you get the scale tool. So from the side, scale is down like so. And then don't forget, um, tap again on the move selection tool to uh, move this down to position it. Tap again on the scale tool. And again, don't forget to tap on the node selection and bring this up, I guess, pixel by pixel, like so. Okay, I like what I see. Now, I need to create two cuts. So I'm going to select the scissors tool. I'm going to create one cut right there and one right there. And since we want to create, to get rid of the top part of the stroke, we're going to use the node selection tool. This is the equivalent of the direct selection tool inside Illustrator. So tap this once, the node selection, 
and then just tap anywhere on the top of the top stroke like so and then just uh, tap on the trash icon and voila it's gone okay quite easy now the question is how do we continue from here with the node selection tools still selected marquee select your um, the path like so and then tap on the pen tool and tap on the last node which is this one and as you can see now the uh the, the path has been extended from this node so i'm gonna zoom out here a bit with the pen tool selected still i'm going to tap here and create a nice curve now before i let go we've got two choices we either use two control handles or one. I'm going to show you both. In this case, I'm going to continue with two control handles. And the way you do that is you're going to, again, place your finger in, in anywhere in the canvas. And now you can move this handle independently from that handle. Just bring it close, like so. Release, tap and drag again. Again, change the direction of this control handle. Release. Tap and drag, and let's do this here. There we go. Now I'm going to show you the other way. I'm going to tap on the last segment to sever away the control handle. There we go. And go down there. And I don't know, I'm just going to click once here. I'm doing this on purpose so we can, I can show you how easy it is to bring back the um, control handles inside Vectornator. So now I'm going to tap and drag. Something like that. We're going to massage the points later. Tap again once. There we go. Undo this for a second. And then Go around there, tap it again, there we go. Okay, back on the node selection tool, let's work on this guy here. So we got two nodes, but here we got nothing. So tap and you got it. Now first I'm going to move this, there we go, and then Here's the trick. You first select the control handle and then tap the finger anywhere on the canvas and you can reposition this. There we go. Very, very easy. Okay. I can maybe do a better job here, like so. So continue this process the process of tapping and dragging nodes and control handles so your curves are smooth as well as follow the ornament background photo as close as you can. Now since we have an open path, how do we continue from here? Well, the same way as before, we're going to use the node selection tool, marquee selected, tap on the pen tool, Tap on the last node and then tap and drag to create that. Okay. Tap on the last segment. Here I'm going to need both of the control handles, like so. I'm going to undo this. There we go. And now I'm going to create a long path right here. Something like that. We're going to reposition this a bit later. And let's see. I'm going to go all the way down here. Now, this control handle, the last control handle, will dictate the next anchor point, the next node. So I need to bring this handle close. So I'm going to tap the finger on the screen, bring this close, tap and drag. 
and do this. Try again. Bring this close. And again, I'm not doing a perfect job here, but we will massage this and it's, not, it's going to look better. One here, maybe one there and one there. Okay. All right, back on the note selection tool. Let's see what we can improve. First of all, this one, okay. And I'm going to leave it as it is. And then let's work on this guy. I'm not too happy here. There we go. It looks better. Okay. You're going to have to do all this as well. Massage your points. Okay. But the cool thing is that it's quite easy to do it. All you do is just spend a little time and do that. This is just here. I'm just going to, yeah, something like that, right? Let's look at the overall shape here looks pretty good now with the node selection again i want to make sure that this bottom node and the top node align to each other and if you can recall at the beginning of the tutorial inside the settings panel we kept the smart guides on and that will help us align those two nodes together so tap and reposition those two endpoints till they snap to each other now what do we do? Well, we're going to use the Move Selection tool. Tap on that. Marquee select the, the path. Okay. Because we want to duplicate this, when you activate the Alt switch, then you, you're on duplicate mode. And so I'm going to tap once on the Alt switch. Then I'm going to tap and drag. And here is the duplicate path. Now, don't forget to tap the Alt Switch tool again to deactivate it. Otherwise, you will make more copies of the same path. With the um, Move Selection again, we need to flip this horizontally. So, in the Context menu here, the Arranged Context menu, tap on that, and then tap on the Flip Horizontal like so and there we go we have both here okay all right so let me deselect i'm going to zoom in here very close i'm going to use the node selection tool and i need to bring those right next to on top of each other that will help me to be able to unite those two that should be better it should be okay I think that will be okay here. All right, so back on the move selection, we're gonna select both of these. Okay, marquee, select those two shapes. And then on the path context menu, tap on that, and we're gonna use the very first choice, which is the unite. So once you tap the unite Boolean operator, Vectornator does a great job uniting those two intersecting paths. Next. Tap on the Layers panel, tap on the Photo layer to delete it by pressing the Thrush icon, since we don't need the background photo anymore, we just need the path. Next, let's also give the whole ornament a fill color. So tap on the canvas and I'm going to marquee select everything like so. Then tap on the Fill Options icon. Here you can give any color you wish. I'm just going to tap on the number and give a specific hex number. That will be 0099FF. And then I'm going to disable the stroke. So tap on the stroke icon and then just disable it. And then just tap on the canvas anywhere, like so. Now we are ready to export this ornament 
to different file formats. First, I will export the ornament to the Adobe Creative Cloud. So tap the export button in the top right corner and then tap on the send to Illustrator CC button. It will take a few seconds and without any hassles, the ornament will open as SVG file format back on your computer for further editing. At the event you're not subscribed to the Adobe Creative Cloud membership, then you can use the AI export option. Once you tap on the button, you will be presented with the pop-up message describing the process of exporting your Vectonator file. In essence, it uploads your file to the Creative Cloud server to be converted, but then it gets deleted. So tap to agree and wait for a second for this process to be completed. Okay, now tap to save. In this case, again, I'm going to use the OneDrive and under files and vectornator, I'm just going to upload it here, like so. Now let's go ahead and continue exporting to some other file formats inside vectornator. So tap on the export button, then tap on the JPEG option. And the first thing we see here under the settings is the quality. Right now we have 90%, that's very fine for me. But then under the image size, we have the option to scale our graphic. So I'm just gonna tap on the 100 field, the scale field, and you get this pop-up calculator. So tap on the clear button here and just tap 200 for 200% and then tap on the check mark icon like so. I'm just going to rename this to 2x and I'm going to save this again on OneDrive under Vectornator and just going to upload it here. There you go. All right, let's continue. I'm going to use the PNG export option. And here by default, we have the transparency on, which is a pretty good idea. So I'm just going to save that up again under OneDrive and Vectornator and upload it here. There you go, that was fast. And the last option, export option that I wanna talk about is actually the SVG option. Now SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and they are good for logos, icons, animation, backgrounds, and so on. Now, another reason to use SVG would be if you want to continue working on another software platform other than the Adobe Illustrator, you can use the SVG export format. As for the settings here, it says create outlines from text. Since we don't have any text, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Tap to save, under OneDrive again, Vectornator, I'm just gonna upload it here. Back on the desktop computer, let's take a look at the file formats we exported and how they came in. First, the ornament SVG format that was exported using the Send to Illustrator CC option. And as you can see inside the Layers panel, it came in as a compound path, since inside Vectornator, we use the Unite command. What you can do here is just select the path and right-click to ungroup this. Similar story with the Illustrator format. It came in again as a compound path. So you can just right click and ungroup this. Now let's go ahead and look at the other two options. We have the JPEG option that we saved twice as big as original. That also came great. And lastly, we have the PNG file that came in as transparent. So great to see that everything was exported from Vectornator the way it was supposed to. So my experience with Vectornator has been very positive because it feels very intuitive, especially working with the pen tool. Since the technology is shifting to using tablets for our daily workflow, Vectornator offers rock solid set of tools and it's a fantastic all around vector graphic software 
for all designers, whether you are a professional or you have an interest in design. I find myself integrating Vectonator more and more in my daily workflow, and I'm looking forward to sharing some more tips. Till we meet again, thank you for watching and spending time with me.